What is a pledged asset line? Well, here to talk with me about that is Amy Shepard from Sensible Money. Amy, welcome. Hi, Bob. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you here, and it will be a pleasure to have you walk us through what a pledged asset line is. Yeah, so it's something that comes up from time to time working with clients, and I get questions on it. Not a lot of people are familiar with it, so I thought it'd be a, a good topic for us to discuss. But um, we often refer to it as a PAL. You know, we love our acronyms in this industry. So a PAL is a pledged asset line, and it's essentially a line of credit that allows you to borrow against your securities, your investments um, in a brokerage account without having to sell anything. And so because people are not often familiar with it, I try to give a comparison. Lots of people are familiar with home equity line of credits or HELOCs. It's similar to that. You know, with a HELOC, you can borrow against the equity in your home without having to actually sell the house. And that's how a PAL works. You can borrow against the investments in your account without having to sell them. Um, it is specific to brokerage accounts only um, or, you know, taxable accounts. You can't do this in an IRA or a 401k or a retirement account. Right. And some people who have uh, brokerage accounts might be familiar with margin accounts, and but a PAL is different from a margin account? That is correct. It is different. There are some similarities, but with a PAL, it, you're, you're not um, selling or buying on margin. You're, you're really using the investments in the account as collateral for a loan. Um, one of the things that's specifically prohibited with a PAL is using the line of credit to buy more investments. And you actually, if you open a PAL, you, um, the account itself has margin disabled. So you can't use margin um, with, a, with one of these types of accounts. All right. So why, why might someone use a PAL? So I'll give you the uh, example that comes up most frequently when uh, I'm working with clients, but most common people use them for temporary financing when buying a ho another home. And so the example there is that, you know, you live in your primary residence, you want to buy a new house. I work with retirees, and so a lot of times they have paid off homes, and they could go through the process of, you know, getting the new house while they're in their current home, getting a mortgage and then moving. But a lot of times they say, well, I want to sell our current home. You know, it's, it's paid off. We're going to get a lump of cash and then we want to take that cash and buy the new house. But then you have to make a contingent offer and people don't want to go through the hassle of getting a mortgage to only have it for a short period of time. And so the PAL can be a really great source of temporary financing where if you have a large brokerage account, you can use that line of credit to buy the new home while you're still in the current home. When you sell the current home, you take the proceeds, you pay off the line of credit. So that is the, the most frequent use I see, but I have also had clients use it to fund a business expansion. Um, you know, I've had clients use it to fund the purchase of uh, real estate investment properties. So there's a wide range of use. Right. And in terms of uh, other um, uh, uses, for instance, uh, if someone wanted to use it for what home repairs or vacations or buying a car, that that's sort of a, a suitable use as well? Yep, it is. Um, you know, I think in the fine print it says you can use it for any lawful purpose. <laughs> that's kind of the key there. But, yeah, it you can use it for all of those things. One of the, you know, bullet points I always – like to mention is that it's it's something that it still charges interest it's not free access to money and so you want to use it for things that make sense in the overall you know picture of your financial situation you don't want to use it like a, a credit card that you're not able to pay off at the end of the month um, you want to make sure that that the benefits you know outweigh the risk so if it's a vacation that you want to take and you know you have a, a big chunk of money coming in somewhere else then yeah you can use it for a vacation but you want to have a set plan to paying it off i think that's the key right and then how is the amount of credit determined and is there an a, a uh, an initial advance amount that or a minimum advance amount yep so the line of credit is determined based on the makeup of the brokerage account itself um general guidelines so not black and white at all but generally speaking if there's any money market or cash like investments in the account those get an advance rate of you know 96% so if you have $100 of cash 96 cents of that can be available um, to use in the line of credit 
and then more traditional securities. So like investments with ticker symbols, those typically have an advance rate of 70%. Um, there are definitely some exceptions. You know, one of the things I've seen is some, some less common type investments. So just for fun, earlier today I was Googling, or not Googling, but I was searching, the, the Schwab website has a tool where you can look up specific ticker symbols. I happened to type in some different cryptocurrency ones and all of those were listed as ineligible. So generally speaking, 70% 70, 70 on investment securities and 96% on cash, but um, with some exceptions. Right. And then is there a minimum amount that you need to take from your from the PAL or is it sort of I could take a dollar if I needed to or I could take whatever the ratio is that is on my taxable brokerage yes. account? Yes. So there is a minimum initial uh, draw that you have to take, which is $70,000. So that's a pretty big chunk. The good news is, so you have to take that initial 70,000 to activate the line of credit, but say you only need 30,000. You could take the 70, then turn around, you know, and pay back what you don't need. In this case, if you only need 30,000, you could pay back the 40,000, but the initial draw does have to be 70,000. All right, and the benefits of using a PAL? I would say biggest benefit for most people is the avoidance of having to sell investments and incur capital gains taxes, especially for something temporary like the house example. Um, you know, the thought of liquidating investments that, you know, potentially are going to generate a bunch of capital gains taxes just to do that for such a short term solution can be painful. And so that's the top reason is that we often use the PALS at, for a tax planning uh, strategy. But um, also, you can get better rates usually with a PAL than you could with, you know, an unsecured, like, personal loan or something like that. There are no origination costs or, or upfront fees, no application fees with the PAL. Really, the only cost associated with it is the interest. You, you know, you have to pay interest on the line of credit. But they're very simple and easy to use. They're pretty flexible. Um, those are all the reasons why people like them. Yeah, and I have to imagine there are some risks associated or downsides associated of with course, PALS. Of course, like everything, right? There's always the pros and the cons. So the biggest one with a PAL is similar to what you mentioned about margin. You know, there there is the uh, possibility of market volatility. And so if, you, if the market is volatile, your uh, available credit could decline. So that could uh, impact your buying power. But then also there can be what's called a, a maintenance call. So similar, you know, there's margin calls in a margin account. With a PAL, there can be a maintenance call. So if the market declines, you may have to make a payment or you may have to add additional securities to the account to, you know, get that collateral back up to a certain level. That is by far the biggest risk. Um, some other potential downsides are the interest rate is variable. And so, you know, in the last few years, we've seen lots of interest rate spikes. Who knows? You know, everyone says that's not going to continue, but at some point in the future, it could. Um, and there is also the potential that, you know, the lender could demand the balance be paid in full at any time. That's in the fine print. Personally, I've never seen that happen, but it, it is a possibility. So that's important to know as well. Right. And then in terms of the costs for PAL? Yeah, so really minimal. That's why I think people really like them, especially for temporary financing for a home purchase. I mean, if you think of a mortgage, man, there's so many costs rolled into a mortgage. Um, when you look at that statement and you see, okay, here's here's the purchase price of the home, but then here's the potential loan amount with all the fees added in, it can be a lot. Um, with the, with a PAL, there are no none of those costs, no origination fees, no loan application fees. There really is just the interest. So you most people that uh, use it for the home type situation I mentioned, they just pay interest only during that temporary period where they need the financing. And then when they sell the current home, they turn around and pay off the, the principal balance in full. But really the only cost is the interest. And then, you know, obviously there's a, a late fee cost, but pretty minimal in terms of um, the cost and the effort needed to open it. Right. And then how does the, how is the interest rate? So determined? the interest rate is determined. It has two pieces. The, the primary interest rate is determined by something called the SOFR, S-O-F-R. It's a secured overnight financing rate. Um, 
Currently today, you know, early May 2024, that's about 5.3%. So that's the first part of the rate. And then the second part is an interest rate spread um, that goes to the, you know, the brokerage firm that's uh, initiating this process. And for Schwab specifically, that can be today, you know, anywhere between about like 2.5% to 4.5%. It varies based on the amount of the uh, initial line of credit. So the bigger the line of credit, the lower the rate is. Right. And then in terms of, uh, you mentioned mortgages a second ago, uh, a mortgage typically has a term, 15 years, 30 years. Is there a term associated with the There are no terms PAL? associated with the PAL, and so I think that's another benefit is it is flexible, kind of like, you know, a home equity line of credit. It is it is a revolving line of credit that you can use it for that home purchase example. You could pay it off in full, and then it just sits there with a zero balance, and then, you know, maybe surprise, that new home you just bought needs, uh, you know, major plumbing repairs. You could go back and, and use the PAL again, um, so it, it does stay open open indefinitely. All right, and I, I suppose uh, everyone wants to know how long it takes to open Yeah, so I would say that's another benefit, is they're pretty quick and pretty painless, um, especially for people who are, you know, in my case, I'm most familiar with them at Charles Schwab, but um, they do have them at, at other brokerage firms as well. But at, with Schwab, if somebody has existing Schwab accounts, you know, usually we can get the PAL open in two to three weeks. It's pretty quick. Um, I always do try to, you know, advocate if somebody knows they're going to be looking for a new home. Usually those things are, are planned in advance, and so it is always good to open the PAL in advance if possible. But um, generally speaking, it does typically get done pretty quickly. Yeah. So, Amy, we've covered a lot of ground. Anything we missed or bears um, reemphasizing? Yeah, just the usual that it's a great tool. There's a lot of great tools out there. It doesn't mean that they're always the right tool for people to use. But um, in my experience, I've, I found a lot of people aren't familiar with this tool. And so I think that's the biggest thing is knowing what options are available and then knowing when they could make sense or maybe when they're not the best tool to use, I think, is doing your homework is always important. Well, Amy, as always, thanks for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. It's uh, so thanks, greatly Bob. appreciated. Thank you.